welcome to Ask the Texperts. Um, we have two uh, wonderful guests today. Uh, the first presenter is Michelle, Kl not Michelle, sorry, Christina Kozlowski. There we go. I'm Rana. Here we go. Christina Kozlowski. Uh, she is the um, owner of Creative Solutions, which she started in 2017. Um, she helps small businesses and nonprofits nationwide take their website to the next level. She has over five years of marketing experience within small businesses and nonprofits. Um, and she decided to have her own entrepreneurial dream and started her own business, as I mentioned, in 2017. Um, between clients, agency work, and collaborations, she's worked on nearly 100 websites. Her specialty is website design with search engine optimization. Even though websites are her specialty, she has a wealth of marketing knowledge to share and tips for improving your online presence. And she's going to discuss that today uh, with her 10 social media tips. Um, and following her, we're gonna have Ann Matuzek from Pixology, and we'll introduce her at her session as well. We're gonna do uh, questions before, or between each one, and then at the end of Ann's as well. So let us know if you have questions, we'll be monitoring the chat, uh, and then you can also ask at the end. So thank you guys so much for joining, we appreciate it, and uh, enjoy our session. Hello. Go ahead. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present today and I'll be talking about social media. So let's get started. Social media is simple, right? Anyone can do it. Think again. Social media may seem simple, but it is more than just posting on profiles. Social media is more about building your brand, promoting brand recognition, increasing brand awareness, and ultimately managing your brand reputation. When done right, social media is a powerful tool in your marketing tool set. Today, I'm going to share with you 10 social media tips for social media success. These are intended to be broad and apply across social media platforms. So let's get started. Number one, tailor your social post to the platform. If your brand uses multiple social media platforms, you can create your post once, select an image, and then just copy and paste the text in between platforms, right? No, this is a huge no-no for social media. Do not share the exact same post on multiple social media channels. Rather, you need to tailor your post to the platform's requirements. The right caption length, image size, number of hashtags, and applicable inclusions will vary from platform to platform. So in this example, you have the same post concept, but you can see each post is crafted a little bit differently for Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. On Facebook, um, it's a little bit more wordy. On Twitter, you gotta be shorter. On LinkedIn, you know, your personal profile will probably get a little more reach than your company page. So you see how they posted personally, then shared it from their company page. So it's important to know that not only the functionality varies from platform to platform, like I mentioned, Facebook posts can be longer than Twitter posts, but also the best practices and the audience will differ. Facebook is very personal, story driven, while LinkedIn is more professional. So regardless if you're posting as an individual or on your company pages, you need to know how your audiences are gonna differ. As an action step for today, outline the best practices for each platform and specify how you will adapt your social media posts accordingly. Number two, always post with a purpose. Don't just post to post or because you haven't in a while. Your audience is gonna see right through this. Furthermore, these types of posts provide no value and are far more likely to have a negative impact on your social media following and or engagement. If you see a page, you know, posting those auto-generated links where the image doesn't even look right and it's just the link and there's no text and you're like, what's the point? You might look past those poor posts once or twice, but if you see them more than once or twice, you're probably going to unfollow or unlike that brand, which means their posts are no longer going to show up in your social feed. As Simon Kings North stated, great content needs to be all of the following. Credible, shareable, useful or fun, interesting, relevant, different, and on brand. To make great content, it takes deliberate effort, time, and resources. 
When you next go to post, think about your desired outcome and set your post up for success with applicable images, links. So for example, if you want to, I guess, encourage event attendance, then you should provide a teaser about the event that will incentivize an RSVP, include a call to action, and make it easy for your audience to take that action by providing a link. As an action step, outline the types of posts you will share and specify best practices for each type of post. Number three, always be on brand. Always keep your posts on brand so that they align with your visual identity. You want your posts, you know, in this example, exact sciences, you can tell it's exact sciences with their colors, their logo, the posts just look and feel them. So it's really important for your posts to be on point in regards to your visual identity. Make sure your logo, your fonts, your colors, and your imagery fit your brand. Also consider your voice identity. What's your tone of voice, your word choice, your call to actions, your key messages? Use that language in your posts. Also consider your attitude identity and fit your post to your brand personality. To help you keep your posts on brand, I recommend you know, creating a graphic template in Canva. And maybe it's a different template for each types of posts, whether it's educational or um, sentimental or encouraging events. You can have different templates for each, but the important part is consistency. Um, you also wanna outline your voice by defining your purpose, your key messages and call to actions. And most importantly, I recommend creating a list of what is appropriate and what is not appropriate. Whether you are a business or an individual, we can all use boundaries on social media. What you post is going to be a reflection of your rep how people perceive you and will influence your reputation. So think before you post, let's put it that way, especially considering the environment we're in and everything else going on in the world. Think before you post and make sure you want that post to influence your reputation. As an action step, create a Canva template that fits your brand identity. If you wanna take it a step further, create a style guide or a brand identity guide that defines the proper use of logos, colors, images, messages, word choice, all of that. Number four, remember it is about your audience, not you. Always reframe your perspective from the, intern from the internal business side to the external customer standpoint. There are two important things to keep in mind. You need to know who your target audience is and you need to listen to them to improve accordingly. Social listening is all about collecting data from mentions, posts, comments to gain customer insights so that you can make better decisions. The best part is there is tons of data available at your fingertips to do this. As an action step for today, find the analytics in your social media platform and take 15 minutes to read the little tool tip that explains what the metric is. Often when you see a metric in social media and a social media platform, they have like a little like great exclamation or question mark. And if you hover over that, you'll get a description of what that number actually means. Once you have a better idea of understanding what the analytics mean, you can make better decisions on what worked, what didn't work, and identify opportunities to improve. Number five, which of the two do you prefer? Two posts per day with an average reach of 105 individuals or two posts per week with an average reach of 450 individuals? Personally, Creative Solutions prefers the quality approach with two posts per week with an average reach of 450 individuals. Guess what? Your audience will agree. According to Rev Local, when a brand posts twice a day, those posts only receive 57% of the likes and 78% of the comments per post. The drop-off continues as more posts are made in that day. Furthermore, not only will your audience appreciate the quality, but your algorithms will, will 
will reward it. Algorithms penalize low quality content. A business page with low quality content is no different than that annoying friend that posts every single detail of their life. As an action step, plan your content calendar and maybe even plan content themes. Content themes are a great way to organize your content and help you come up with ideas. Like um, Tech Labs mentioned, this month is cybersecurity awareness. So that is a great theme for them to leverage. You can think about that in your business and help use themes to guide your topic inspiration and your ideas. All right. Number six, be consistent with your brand message. Be consistent in how you portray your brand and post frequently and regularly. Consistency is all about setting expectations, building credibility and trust, improving engagement and reach, and most importantly, the algorithms reward it. As an action step for today, outline your promotional schedule by specifying how often you will post, where you will distribute your content, and what you will share. In this example, I have two different exam, you know, examples of posts. They're different in intent, but you can still see they're the same brand. And you, know, you can see that they had a content strategy. They didn't miss at National Engineers Week. Little things like that go a long way, and you have to plan to take advantage of hashtag holidays, um, theme months, theme weeks. If you don't plan it in your promotional schedule, you'll probably you know, see it on social, wish you could, put a post out quick, but if you didn't think it through, that might not turn out as good as it could have been if you had planned, come up with a strategy, and then use the hashtag. Number seven, find raving fans. You know how celebrities representing, represent brands and advocate on behalf of a product? This is an example of influencer marketing. Influencer marketing occurs when you recruit an influencer in your industry to drive your brand message and help increase awareness of your brand. Realistically, small businesses are probably not going to have the resources to invest in influencer marketing, but you can dial it back and build local influence instead. To build local influence, recruit three to five raving fans for consistent social support in terms of likes, comments, shares. Make the relationship reciprocal so that it lasts. When you interact with other brands and support their efforts, you will be truly amazed at how they reciprocate and the relationship formed. Additionally, consider how you can turn your customers into raving fans. Make sure your customers are aware of the platforms you are active on and encourage them to interact with your brand. Furthermore, ask your customers to advocate on behalf of your brand and share a photo of them using your product or provide a testimonial. Local influencers are far more realistic for a small business owner and might just be more powerful. According to so Sprout Social, 61% of consumers said they'd be more likely to research a brand or a product a friend posted about compared to the 36 influenced by a celebrity. As an action step for today, identify three to five raving fans who in routinely interact with your page or recruit some friends to help you out. To take this a step further, develop a campaign that um, incentivizes your customers to leave likes, check-ins, follows, posts, reviews, comments, or shares. Number eight, focus on sharing, not selling. Sharing is all about educating your audience on your offering, providing value, or sharing helpful tips and resources. When you focus on sharing, your posts will revolve around who, how you help, who you help, and what problems you solve. Try to entice the purchase and avoid being too salesy or spammy. Most importantly, don't sell or push sales. Pushing sales on social media sends a message that you're focused on yourself as a business, not the customer. Focus on your audience and their needs, not your products or your sales goals. According to Sprout Social, too many promotional messages not only annoy followers, they cause 46% of people to unfollow a brand. As an action step, brainstorm posts that show how you help who you help, what problems you solve, and how your customers benefit from your products or services.
Number nine, prioritize interaction. Social media involves more than just posting. It requires interaction through shares, comments, and messages. Make sure you always respond to messages and comments. Platforms like Facebook grade you on your response and say, you know, hey, this page typically replies in a few hours. So make sure you get a good response rate. Many individuals who follow your page want a two-way dialogue with your brand. So make this happen. To help you prioritize interaction, consider the following tips. Set reminders to follow up on your post and respond accordingly. Dedicate a percentage of your social media time to engaging with others. Find new pages, people, or influencers to interact with. As an action step, outline your response plan for messages and comments. Make sure you consider your ideal response time and who is responsible for that interaction. Number 10, create compelling content. How do you capture attention and stop the scroll? With compelling content. Compelling content resonates with your audience, aligns with your brand message, makes it irresistible not to click, share, or engage with. It captivates attention and is of value. And most importantly, it passes the so what test. When it comes to the so what test, your audience should be able to tell instantly whether you're trying to be educational, sentimental, humorous, fun, interesting, etc. As an action step for today, start building your content database of stunning photography and videos that resonate with your audience, align with your brand message, and captivates attention. And thankfully, we have Anne on the call to help you build that database next. So in summary, keep these 10 actionable social media tips in mind and integrate them into your social media strategy so that you can set yourself up for success and avoid the typical social media mistakes that many small businesses make when they're new to social media, just starting out or don't really understand. Them.